So I've uh, been working on getting all of these uh, SPIM batteries charged up and ready to use. And uh, I haven't had any issues with a single one of them until I found this one. I don't know if you can see that right there. That looks like some corrosion. I believe that I've charged somewhere between 80 and 100 of these. Uh, and I am still in the process of getting these uh, ready to start playing with them. And this is the first and only one that I found like this. So I set it aside until I had a moment to uh, go through and show it with you. So let's go ahead and unveil it and un unveil that tape, peel, peel it back and see what we've got going on with it. I want to see if this battery is good or not. Um, so we are going to peel this back and see if we actually have a corrosion problem here or if maybe this is just something from the packaging that leaked. I didn't notice anything in the box um, when I pulled it out. Uh, they were actually stacked in the box like this. So they weren't in the box vertically. They were sitting like this, stacked pancake style like this in the box. So I don't know, uh, I didn't see anything. This is the sheet of cardboard it was on and I don't see anything on it anywhere. Um, so my hope is that there's nothing wrong with this cell and that our problem is actually um, just something on the surface here. So I have my voltmeter here and I am going to go ahead and get a setup with some alligator clips so we can check the voltage and peel this tape off and see what this battery looks like. All right, guys, uh, so I just peeled the, the tape back so that way we can just fold it back over the terminals when we're done here. But I have taken a fairly close look at this um, and it doesn't look like battery acid necessarily is leaking out of the pouch as best as I can tell. See. Get this tape out of the way. Um, because it almost looks like the corrosion comes from the tip down. But then again, I don't know for sure, but I was thinking that these terminals were, were a piece of copper sandwiched in between like two pieces of aluminum. But that just looks like a solid piece of metal to me, so I don't know. Oh, man, it's hard to say. Either way, that is what that looks like there. The top looks fine. The whole rest of the, the battery cell looks fine. So I have an alligator clip here hooked up to the negative terminal on my um, leads here. And we are going to uh, test and see. Mind you, this battery's probably been sitting for a couple years now without being charged or anything. So... Let's see what we get for voltage. So it's definitely on the low side, but 3.27 sitting for a couple of years, I don't think that's that bad. Uh, a lot of the ones that I've been charging have been uh, as low as 3.3, 3.4 volts after sitting this long. So I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and put this on the charger and just monitor it, see what she does. All right guys, so here we are over at the charger. Um, and sorry for the mess, it's a temporary mess, but uh, nonetheless it's still here. You can see this is the cell that we were just looking at. There's the corrosion. Um, she's set up away from any possibility of shorting. And here's our uh, IMAX B6. So let's go ahead and kick it on. 3.26 volts is what it said right there when it started. And that's what, I mean, our reading showed. And that's definitely amongst the lowest ones that um, I've pulled from these boxes so far. I've pulled several in the 3.4 range. Um, I think 3.26 is definitely on the lower side of all the ones I've done thus far. So I am going to let this charge. It's charging at five amps. Um, and I will sit here and monitor this cell and uh, if anything weird, crazy, exciting, anything at all happens, I will instantly turn on the camera and share with you guys my findings and 
honestly, at this point. Being the only bad one that I found, uh, I am very strongly leaning towards just uh, pulling this one out of the pack and possibly just recycling it or find something uh, other to do with it where I won't have to be concerned with it in my pack. Pretty sure that when I did the count that I was gonna be, I think I had three or four extra cells uh, for the battery pack that I wanted to build. So that would put me with the ability to pull out a couple cells and still be able to build the full battery pack size that I wanted to in a 7S configuration to get me that 24 volt system. Uh, so I will keep you updated. I will monitor that battery and let you know if I find anything out of the norm with it. So I came and checked on this battery periodically throughout um, its charging uh, about every 15 to 20 minutes or so. And it never even got warm to the touch. So I just let it keep going until the IMAX said it was full. Here we are. 143 minutes and 58 seconds so that's what two hours and 23 minutes and it took 700 or 7,699 milliamp hours so 7.7 .7 milliamp hours essentially and I have not touched this other than to check for temperature um, it didn't smoke steam puff it's not bloated at all focus there's no cell bloat and the big question is is there any signs of leakage or anything new at all and I don't see I'm trying to look at it and keep the camera centered on it but I don't see any signs of anything there um, that is new since charging or anything like that so either way just to be prudent i think i'm going to keep this cell out of use and maybe see if i can find uh, a practical use for it and other things that i'm doing I mean, just to be on the safe side i think i would rather keep it aside and maybe do maybe what we'll do is we'll do some additional testing side by side with this cell versus some of the other ones. I'll just post that as I do that. So maybe we'll let it sit for a week or two and then see if there's a extra cell drift and then maybe we can do some capacity tests side by side. I'll just, maybe I'll pick a, another cell at random. Probably one that I'll go through and throw on the charger today. So that way they, they are within, you know, the same time frame of being fully charged and we'll just keep them paired up. Uh, and do our testing that way but other than that I mean it gave me no sign symptoms or anything else to be concerned or believe that there's a problem with it it almost looks like maybe it got shorted out right there on the tip maybe it, that's arc and it um, superheated it super quick maybe like during disassembly or something i don't know but that doesn't necessarily make me super comfortable either so we'll just leave it out and uh do some tests and we'll see how it goes all right stay tuned guys